So, uh, good afternoon everyone, and this is going to be my support laning phase guide. And I'm gonna have some, like, two different replays, which I'll show while explaining the decision making and what kind of stuff you can do and what kind of stuff you possibly shouldn't do. <clears throat> In this game, I decided to pick Witch Doctor, because... Uh, I had to pick quite early, and Witch Doctor is a, a hero that's usually a good pick. Like it's it's kind of solid pick. You can be really helpful in different kinds of lineups because his skill set is quite uh, quite strong. And um, let's just let's just go this uh, go through this picking phase because there's. This is not really a guide about picking. <laughs> okay. So, as we begin, the first thing that we should talk about is itemization. And in this game, we had I was lucky to have two supports, uh, Shadow Shaman and me. So, the situation might be sometimes a bit different, but when you don't have to solo support, and you have both on the same lane, like a uh, tri-lane. The other one should buy Boots of Speed, and the other should buy some uh, all these Career and Observer Awards. Just because when you have Boots of, boots of Speed on your support, it's uh, really good zoning-wise. I, I actually I remember this game, I told him to buy Boots. He, he's bought something else, but I think he's going to sell them and get Boots of Speed. And for myself, I went for Tangos, Clarity, Ward. I think I'm gonna buy a Healing Salve, and perhaps one more Clarity. Yeah. This is like this is what my normal invent uh, inventory looks like. Like I usually ha buy, whether I w I'm solo support or not, I I usually end up buying Courier. Both wards, giving the other to our dear offlaner, which is a Nyx assassin in this game. Two clarities and <coughs> healing cell. Uh, before I was buying only one clarity and one branch, but I I was thinking about it and I decided it's better to go for two clarities because with clarities I have kind of one extra spell to use when trying to zone out the opponent or when trying to gank or whatever. So th those are those are my items. Y if I had like another support who would buy like a dual lane top, I would start buying items for my magic wand, like branch or circlet or even even uh, magic stick. If if the lane is such, <coughs> so but that that's it about the items. It's it's usually pretty much the same. Either I have tangos, boots of speed, and clarity or I have this kind of really not a greedy not greedy itemization it's in the bag. so uh, what what I do now like you have to you have to predict uh, predict the lanes like this is pretty uh, pretty simple to see like clockwork is almost always the offlaner in this kind of matchup clockwork can go mid but we, we know that we're gonna face uh, solo Work, almost for sure. <coughs> so uh, we are waiting, waiting here. This is I'm gonna talk about ward spots in in another guide, but usually I just place it here to show rune. And the places you might <coughs> you might think of going when when you play support, like before the creep spawn. This is a pretty important stage. If your carry doesn't go anywhere here to watch to watch the offlaner if he goes uh, if he goes warding that's pretty important to know like uh, he went here to see if clockwork comes to place some ward so it's pretty easy to de ward if not one support should perhaps be here or then you watch the rune it's uh, both choices are pretty pretty good but now we have a nice situation where carry is doing his job and we are doing our job on the on the bottom line <coughs> And if I remember correctly, we get the rune with no with no problems, Stupendous. giving it to mid laner. 
and <clears throat> now we head to the laning phase itself let's wait for the creeps a bit so we'll have okay now you see a situation clock has used his cogs to block the wave so that there is only one creep here so the result is going to be that the lane might start pushing towards his tower meaning that he will get experience or in other scenarios if you don't face clock people might be blocking these melee creeps so the ranged creep is coming forward like a bit ahead of other creeps and if your creeps kill the enemy ranged creep first the lane is gonna push so what you could do in this game I, I didn't remember it but it's it's actually a really good trick to go as support to stand okay how can I draw <laughs> oops just stand somewhere somewhere here um, and kind of take take the lane take one hit from the ranged creep or then just walk with the melee creep here but take one hit from the ranged creep so that it stays behind the melee creeps again and and then the lane is it's much easier for your carry to keep the creep equilibrium fancy word okay and so let's go forwards just a bit now that we see now that we see the offlaner we see that we see clock we're gonna uh, you usually want to check his items like uh, does he have boots that's uh, like the most important thing to know if if the enemy offlaner has boots or not because that that will tell you if it's uh, safe to harass or a bit dangerous to harass so we see clockwork doesn't have boots he has shield he has one word one uh, the word is pretty important thing to notice as well. and what we're doing here because uh, we agreed shadow shaman was the one buying <laughs> was the one buying boots and I didn't so that means I'm gonna be pulling and trying to get experience while Shadow Shaman is going to do some zoning like here and <clears throat> this is like pretty important uh, clockwork was able to have nice blocks so the lane is a bit further closer to the uh, dire tower than it normally is like usually it's a bit closer here but right now when you when you zone out the enemy hero uh, it's it's pretty important that you come from the side like you you really don't want to want to come to attack from for example from the position of shadow fiend because if, if you attack the clockwork then uh, what will happen is that the enemy creeps are gonna attack you and uh, you will kind of lose the lane control because your own creeps don't die anymore so you always have to attack from the side or if possible a bit from behind so this position of shadow shaman is is really good here and and i'm i'm waiting for uh, my chance to take take a pull and get some xp but about uh, shadow shaman's skill build actually i i think this is this is wrong because uh, this Ether shock has uh, it's a lot of damage on level one with quite little amount of mana. So, so when you play Shadow Shaman, you should uh, go level one Ether shock because you can just spam spam the shock and just right clicks to keep keep Clockwork behind. Because now we have Shackle shot, we have only right clicks. We have my stun. Oh, I I don't have anything yet, but uh, we we can have no damage here. So. Uh, so let's continue a bit. So the place place is good for him to zone. There he goes. You see? He's hitting behind the enemy ranged creep, so he doesn't he doesn't get the aggro. He's not too close to the ranged creep. He's he's in the right place. Forcing clock to use cogs. And this is a great position for him to be in. Even though you can you can change uh, kind of attacks. Even even like this, because uh, you still have you still have a lot of region. You have three heroes who have region. You have a healing cell, two tangos, four tangos, two tangos, and healing cell. So uh, so it it doesn't matter if you change plot, just as long as you don't die. And this, that's where the boots thing is important. Now I guess he he goes to region. And the uh, the other thing that I think we should talk about in the beginning is that. Uh, who who takes care of the lane? Like, like I I have seen some some people saying that supports should be the ones denying the lane back, 
and Carrie is just focusing on the last hits, but that's that's actually wrong because Carrie Carrie should be able to keep the lane your like lane pushed close to your tower, and you shouldn't be taking part part to that because because position wise the best places you can be are in the fog of war so that the enemies don't see it. Like when when you're doing doing nothing, you should kind of stay somewhere around this area in the jungle so that the enemies don't see or even hear and you, you should never be standing here behind like behind your carry where the enemy offlaner can see you because you are no useful there if you are hiding then the enemy mid laner might be scared that you gank them or they they don't know where you are and it kind of creates a space for your team yeah so so carry's job is to keep the lane lane pushed uh, not pushed, I mean. Back. Now he comes comes again. And now now he attacked a bit too close, you see. Now the creep started attacking him. It it doesn't matter at this moment because there's so many enemy creeps here, so that lane is gonna push anyway, but it's uh dangerous because even even a few attacks from the range creep because it has a bit higher damage than the melee creeps. I might uh just ruin the lane <laughs> for your carry. Oh, he has to go back because Creep is attacking him. <coughs> okay, but now the lane is... The lane is... Okay, now. And from pulling, of course you have to... The two main things. The other is that you try to get gold for yourself and XP for yourself because three heroes sharing uh, XP on the safe lane is... You don't, you don't get too much. And also you're denying one whole wave of experience from the enemy offlaners. So there's many things that, that are good when you're pulling. Now he goes uh, pretty deep into the jungle. I think we didn't even notice that he placed the ward, which should have happened. But now we try to kill. I, I was waiting for... I was waiting with the casket so that it goes uh, close to the neutral creeps. So that I might get a lucky lucky bounce here. Unfortunately, not. Here, the mistake the mistake I made was that during the shackle I should have just walked next to the clockwork, so I would be in the cogs with it. Would die. But now he he's able to salve up, or not not so long, but he he actually manages to survive. Uh, let's see here. We can speed it speed it up a bit. Our carry was awake and went to throw some raises, so we get uh, lucky. Didn't miss there, so a lucky first blood. And uh, important timers for supports are two minutes, two minutes, uh, two minutes rune. You should always secure or take two minute rune. Secure for your mid, or just take yourself. And if it's something useful, you might want to might want to try to gank. See if there is like low HP. If I had something like haste right now, I I'm sure I would go there to try to gank this Magnus, as he's quite low HP, and we have Storm can deal a bit of damage. So winning lane for Storm is is quite important. And <coughs> Yeah, so so rune control as support is quite quite important thing. And also, um, what I what I forgot to mention during the during the early laning phase is that you shouldn't be scared to use your mana. Whether you are a shadow shaman or witch doctor or lion or whatever, you should you should spend your mana to zone out the offlaner. As long as you keep, you, you have to try to keep him level 1. If there's only one hero, your goal is that he gets no level up. Now the clockwork ha has it, so we didn't succeed as well as we could. Maybe we, if he had taken this Aether Shock, it would have succeeded. But we didn't. But that, that's the goal. So don't, don't be scared to use your mana. It's quite, quite okay to spend your mana pool and then just clarity up. Or even with... Like with Skyrath Mage, I might just spend my whole mana pool on the offlaner and then walk to base to region if it's if I see it's uh, worth it. So, 
this game actually we are we are quite uh, passive ganking wise but and and our carry has been able I to keep the lane pretty nicely so this in in some sense this is quite ideal game for us but uh, in case where if, if our lane pushed a lot there's a few options that you can do if, if this lane started pushing well, what we could do is to smoke because because you can't just uh, if the lane pushes you have to do something you can't just three heroes stand on the lane I, my best choice would be smoking and and with smoke there's two different things you might want to do the other one is to gank mid from here just walk here ask your mid laner to push the lane to the tower so you can walk behind the trees and start fighting here that's the uh, that's the first option and which is i think that's the most common thing you do gank the mid laner that's why you have to have another option as well because because you don't always want to do stuff that is expected and the other thing that i i don't see done that much but it's pretty good because as as you have the uh your goal is to keep uh, off laner real low hp so what what you do is with smoke you start running from here up here and fight come behind the tower and fight here kill the kill the enemy off laner here at the tower when he thinks he's thinks he's getting getting a lot of xp from uh maybe even a double wave or something like that then you just come behind and and kill him so that is that is one thing you can do when when the lane pushes <clears throat> and also you when, when you play like when you have kind of nice lane for yourself you should try to keep track on how, how the other lanes are going like how you have to know how your mid lane is doing like you can ask him like if, if he's okay if he needs something or you can check how many levels your offlaner has compared to the enemy offlaner so we are doing pretty fine he's level three and clockwork is level two so kind of if we just keep this up we should be kind of okay so that's uh, what, uh one more important timer for this kind of dual uh, i mean tri lane that we have is the four minute mark when the when it's it's the night time. If I if I remember correctly, let let's see. That should be. Yes, four minute mark. The night time when the vision is pretty limited. It's uh it's good time to gank because you don't see heroes approaching that well. You can even gank without smoke in case you know where the enemy observer wards are. But we know that this is blocked, so we. So we see, uh, we know that we could, we could gank, gank here. Okay, then uh, I'm gonna take another replay. Let's close this, which has a bit different laning stage. Here we, here we find it. Copy paste working. Okay. Nice. So this is gonna be dual lane versus dual lane. The itemization is uh, pretty much the same. It, it doesn't change usually unless you know you go against some aggro try versus dry lane when you might want to have magic magic stick like as early as possible. But right now we're gonna have strange uh, laning phase. But I, I figured that uh, dual versus dual is pretty common in in a bit lower bracket games or you you've told me so that we're gonna take take this one beginning is quite strange itemization like i said is it's pretty much the same but uh, we decide we decide that it's better if i go top lane with centaur and queen of pain gonna be safe here by himself and we have greed in ages profit jungle so i'm i'm a solo support let's decrease the speed of it now what what matters here the most is that i 
is to know what kind of lane we are gonna head, uh, we're gonna go against. I think uh, it was pretty difficult to expect anything because they have so, so strange heroes here. So we we couldn't really guess. Now we saw that Zeus is supporting with a uh, questionable quelling blade with this this ward. Saw it, but um, we had we had no idea what kind of lane we're gonna face. And what I'd say about dual lanes is that. And in general, when you play games that prefer dual lanes, I'd say that you should try to pick so that you win your lanes. Like, like that would be that, that would be my go-to. Like winning lanes into winning games. That's the that's the plan. Now, <clears throat> right now we have kind of dangerous lane here. Huskar is quite strong with boots of speed. But you also have to know that Huskar at level 2 or 1 doesn't have anything but Burning Spear. Like he gets, uh, he takes a lot of damage. Even though normally you'd, you'd say that Skywrath Mage is really bad against Huskar. But on level 1 I can I can still harass him really really much. So yeah, evaluate if, if you can win the lane. Right now I think, because they don't have Disable, we have Stun, we have Nukes. I, I felt pretty confident about this lane. So so we are able to harass this Huskar quite a bit, if I remember correctly, like with spells always. I start using spells straight away and I, I try to keep one target so that he gets weak enough so he, he, he becomes too scared to do anything like this. And this is <clears throat> sometimes it's uh, you just have to idle somewhere you you can't do anything like you just have to leech experience but this is uh, like a lane where we can fight uh, Zeus had to take lightning bolt because he, he's searching for a ward there. So here we here we just harass Huskar spending his region has only one tango left there anymore and I still have one clarity and many arcane bolts that I can use so this is this is going pretty well. Centaur is farming. Our Queen of Pain can deal well with Pagna alone, at least should should be able to. Yeah. So overall, I don't even know what Zeus did in the early stages. So oh, he went he went mid to get some XP because Oscar, I guess Oscar demanded XP for himself, which is which is good because Oscar really needs his levels. Like uh, now they did, because uh, they have kind of unwinnable lane here, so that that's why Zeus went away. Like it was pretty clear that we will we will be ahead. So Zeus went to do something else, and that's uh, actually something I'll just uh, talk about a bit a bit later. Here, just <laughs> just showing this dual lane. Like this is uh, these dual lanes are much more simple. Than trilands. I think trilands are, are like the most difficult things because you don't get a lot of XP and you're kind of in pressure to do something. Here uh, I'm doing what's like a lot more common if you have safe lane dual lane. Here we have this aggressive dual lane, but when you have two versus two, you try to win the lane by winning in experience, like getting more XP than the enemy. Like here uh, we try to deny one wave from away from this Huskar, you would do the same. If you had dual lane versus dual lane, you'd just leave your carry for a while here and go do some pulling. If you're level 3 before your enemy's level 3, you you will have a lot stronger nukes than they have and you can just win by by doing those. Oh yeah. We do some uh pulling. I can't remember if Huskar came to contest it. I yeah, I guess he I guess he I guess he came. But we also get the lane a bit closer here, closer to our tower, so it's it's uh, a lot safer. Yeah, we decided it's time to go for Huskar. Uh, Nature's Prophet was nicely, nicely there with us. Without him, I think we couldn't have killed him because my spells, when he is really low HP, my spells don't do a lot of damage, and we don't have really uh, any right-clicky stuff. So this is how. This is how you. You generally try to do a lane, and 
like I said, uh, usually you don't want to stand like behind your carry, like here when when you show, but but in aggressive dual lane, this is, uh, jungle is way too dangerous place for me. If if I was on safe lane, I would I would be somewhere here trying to cast spells and throw some attacks. But it always depends. So you like in, in dual lane versus dual lane, the evaluation is the most important part. You have to evaluate if you are able to win the lane. Like if if you fight, if you go, they initiate on you. Will you win the fight or not? That's that's what matters the most. Yeah, one more battle before. Comes one more battle here. Sometimes you have to stop right-clicking and stop casting spells. And I, I want to uh, block this Bloodseeker so that uh, he, he doesn't get away from Centaur, Centaur stun. You die. Yeah, that's, uh, like I said, dual lanes are pretty straightforward. You just have to like, win your opponent. You don't have to do anything too uh, fancy. You don't have to focus on runes because you just have two versus two and that's what it concentrates on. And if, if you see one enemy missing, like if dual lane turns into solo lane, you have to try to kill him, because then the enemy is most likely doing something useful, so you want to kind of punish them for leaving, leaving the lane. And then a third case, kind of what we have, is... Uh, let's see. I don't have any, uh, right now, any replay about it, but it's kind of unwinnable lane. Which is usually what you see in today's pubs, pretty much. You see heroes such as Undying. He makes... If, if you have Undying dual lane against you, it makes the lane unwinnable because of his strong teamfight skill set in the early game. Or if you have... <coughs> if you have... If you are playing against Broodmother and you don't have any uh, heroes that can deal with him too well, that's that makes it unwinnable lane. If you if you make the evaluation and and realize that there is no way you can win the lane, no way you can harass the enemy hero out of the lane, there is no way you can kill him. And there is like no no way you can secure your carries farm. Then what you have to do is to abandon the lane and try to win the other two lanes. Try to stay in the fog of war. Don't leech your carriage farm. Buy smokes and see openings on other lanes. Or even if if it's possible, just go to go to jungle. And you have to try to deal with this grandmother later. Sometimes in in many games, grandmother has pushed two like two towers. You you just ignore him during that stage and then try to deal with him later see he, he's a bit tricky guy okay and now we i think we should go through good support heroes for zoning and those would be my my favorites would be skywrath mage is, is the best because he has nice nuke which is pretty low cooldown low mana cost deals a lot of damage so you can just Throw the nuke and a few auto attacks and just repeat it. Time. And the other other good heroes, uh, silencer. Silencer is good for. First reason is that uh, glaives of wisdom. When you attack with glaives of wisdom, you don't get creep aggro and it deals a bit of extra damage. So your right click is quite uh, dangerous. Glaives of wisdom. Here they are. Here they are, Spinning blade. and um, and silencer is really great against certain hero heroes or hero such as Phoenix, because the way last word works. Because when when you go at Phoenix, you have last word on him. If he tries his Icarus dive, he's going to be silenced and will return to the same place where he left. So that's that's why I tend to pick silencer quite often against Phoenix. And then we have Jakiro, pretty nice zoner. Not my favorite hero to be honest, because he's a bit clumsy to my liking. Uh, Jakiro, because of liquid liquid fire spam and all, all the other spells as well are 
are okayish, but liquid fire spam is like the most important. You don't get creep aggro. You just have to avoid when you when you harass with Jakiro, you just have to avoid that you don't hit the enemy creeps with the liquid fire. Then we have disruptor. With disruptor, it's nice to harass with oh wrong. Techie is techies is not good. Disruptor you try to harass with Thunderstrike because it's it's nice amount of damage. Just throw in Thunderstrike and then right clicks. Like, like I said before, you don't be scared to use your mana even at the level one. It's usually worth it. We have Witch Doctor is okay, especially at level two because uh, with heal on you can change right clicks. You you win many offlaners just by keeping your heal on and then just right clicking. It's quite effective if you try it. Uh, shadow Shadow Demon and Shadow Shaman. Shadow Shaman because of his nuke is quite strong at level 1 like I mentioned before. He's a bit slow though, so that's his minus still. And Shadow Demon because you can uh, kind of aggressively just disrupt the enemy and then make his illusions attack the enemy hero. Works pretty much the same way as Nuke. And Lion is okay. Lion is not the best for zoning because he doesn't have any spammable nuke, but uh, two seconds of hex is, is pretty much. You get more right clicks in than the enemy, so it's it's okay. And then I have one melee, melee hero here, which is Ogre Magi, because of his huge armor it's uh, and huge HP regeneration. So when you zone with Ogre Magi, you just throw Ignite and go just punch him. Punch the enemy hero with your ogre club, and you usually can outlast him. Look, almost seven armor, so much, so much more than most of the heroes. And always ignite before fire blast. Always, just because with fire blast, if you if you cast it, it's first of all it has pretty short cast range. It's like you you can't even get to cast range if the enemy is awake, and also you get in like two auto attacks and then enemy can just walk away. Ignite lasts so much longer so you get so much more damage. And heroes uh, that are not so easy to zone out. Uh, of course heroes that have boots of speed are pretty pretty annoying and pretty dangerous for supports like clockwork with boots of speed and level 2 is really really annoying but but if if we don't take the boots into account, I'd say that the most annoying hero to zone is Bounty, because it, it costs you a lot to, to zone him effectively, and he also has a lot of armor, so you don't want to get into right-click war with, with him. Almost a 6 armor he has, so he's, he's quite, quite scary. So uh, that's, those are, I think, of course, Broodmother is like He's the he's the ultimate enemy of support heroes. And undying, but undying is tough. But undying as solo hero is not as like when you have dual lane with undying, it you know, his effectiveness rises to new heights. When he's solo, you you might be able to keep him keep him out of the XP range actually quite easily if you have a hero like Skywrath Mage who can spam. Undying can't really take that kind of spam. But, uh, yeah, that's actually things I, I will I had uh, written down, for for my guide. So now there is time. If if you have some questions that you, oh oops, clicked something by accident. If you have some questions that you would like me to answer, I'm I'm more than happy to before we go to solo queue games again. So now it's time for que questions to the chat box. And while waiting waiting for questions and go through some hero combinations for example, but if you I'm gonna stop it right when we get some uh, something. Heroes I wouldn't solo support with in general would be usually melee supports because you can't zone too well. 
unless it's Ogre Magi, which works against certain heroes, like uh, Tide Hunter or a Centaur. Even even he has pretty much HP. But you you don't want to use like Earth Shaker as solo support because your lane uh, your lane presence is inexistent. No, you you don't do it. Also from ranged heroes, I I'd say you don't want to solo support with heroes that don't really have any disables, such as Dazzle, Ancient Apparition, Visage. This I I would never want to solo support because. You really need your disable, and and also we uh, heroes that require some farm. I, I think Rubik is in general pretty greedy support, and he doesn't have a lot of damage when when he's alone. So Rubik is Rubik is important. About the mid game, there's gonna be another guide to that. So there's. Kazilax asking what what's the most important thing to do during mid game, and we we're gonna go a bit more in depth to that in some other guide. But as short answer, I'd say that what you try to do, like first of all, you have to figure out what kind of what kind of position you have in the late game with your heroes. Let's just check some. Uh, let's just check some uh, game here. Now oh, there's these heroes. You have these heroes. You, if you know nothing else than just the heroes, you check and try to figure out whether you win late game or whether you lose. And with these heroes we had, I, I'd say we would win late game. So uh, you can just focus on warding pretty passively. Uh, warding so that you secure your carries farm and in case if if i played if i played this skywrath mage for example in their team i would start placing kind of aggressive wards try to smoke gank try to gank the enemy and because i i usually lead in game so i try to gather my gather my team and figure out whether we have to take objectives or whether we have to kill some specific heroes and it's it's usually it's kind of uh, it's always depend depending on the game what kind of game it is like what what heroes they have if they have a hero like anti mage i have to decide whether we can keep the anti mage dead many enough times or do we have to push through the base before he gets big. It's it's always you have to you have to look at the heroes. What I what I like to do most during the mid game is that I I I want to kill. I want to fight pretty much. So I I try to find openings. I I watch the minimap all the time. Like when the when the enemies go behind certain certain lines in the game. Like. A, past the river, what I mean, uh, I, I try to kill them. That's but uh, about mid game we, we will talk more in later later guides. So is there some uh, questions concerning this uh, laning phase? What different kinds of lanes or what, what to do during the laning phase? Those, those are what I would love to answer now as the my explaining has ended. So, well, it's a bit of delay in the stream, so I will wait for a while until and explain more of these heroes. What not to solo support with? So melee heroes. The only only hero almost who has no disable I would solo support with is Skywrath Mage because he has. So nice uh, abilities to zone with and deals pretty much damage even without disable. And I wouldn't, most likely, I wouldn't solo support with heroes that would love setup for their stuns, like just Lina or Leshrac, which don't can't just 
target stun. It, uh, it's almost like skill shot. Not as bad, but... What do I do when... Uh, Hazilax is asking now, uh, what do I do when I get behind during laning phase? If you mean that we get behind, as in the enemy, enemies getting more farm. Well, they might. First of all, they might have a jungle, so they will get ahead with that. How to come? Okay, let's. When you get behind during landing phase, you have to try to start playing either pretty safe, or then you have to convince your mid player to have a TP, because when the opponents get two kills, if, if it's a safe lane, for example, dual lane versus dual lane, uh, then you, your opponents most likely will get a bit cocky, pretty excited about the kills, kills they've gotten, and try to dive you even more, like try to get more and more farm from killing you. So if your mid laner has a TP, he might get an easy double kill, so try to conv convince your a mid to have a TP. And the other thing is that you might just want to uh, stay behind the tower, but if even that's not possible, then you just go and win other lanes. You like you you can't you can't just uh, uh you can't stay there because you have to change the lanes and try to win other lanes so uh how to come back yeah so that that's pretty much what you what you have to do when you are behind win other lanes or ask for a gank it's uh, the most stupid thing to do is that you just stay there and continue losing the lane and Okay, uh, is there some uh, other more questions that you would have concerning the laning stage? And heroes that are Pretty important while waiting for the questions, so we can go through heroes that are pretty annoying to zone, like dangerous, are still bristleback. Because you have to be really careful with quill stacks, you can suddenly just lose all of your HP when he's spamming his quill spray. Like it's it's kind of surprising how, how much damage it deals. Because uh, Tentor, like you know how much damage he does. He, uh, hoof stomp and double edge. It just that. Okay, so Dracos is asking, how early should you start looking to roam or gank? I think uh, whenever, uh, if if you think about priorities in your laning stage, your first priority would be uh, would be to take care that you you have a you have farm for your carry. That's your that's your first priority. Then if your carry gets farm, and if, if you're winning the lane, like if your carry is level 3 and the enemy offlaner is level 1, that's kind of ideal situation. If, if you've managed to do that, you can start looking for, looking for ganks. Also, if, if you notice that when you watch the map, you notice that the enemy mid laner is kind of low HP, playing pretty risky, and you have a smoke, then, then you can go, but don't don't gank without smoke during during the daytime before four minutes mark. Don't I think you shouldn't gank without smoke, cause you will just lose time and most likely you will do nothing. So smoke or wait for the night time. So that's uh that is my that would be my advice. And Kenrick Kenrick ninety is asking whether you you should zone or pull. I'd, I would prioritize zoning before pulling. It really depends a bit on the heroes. If if you have a hero who who can't really help zoning much, well, any hero can zone. To be honest, you can just right click 
Unless you are like some melee hero, Earthshaker, for example, you can't zone with him. You're slow, you don't have any spammable spell, you just have to go pulling. If, if you have... If you have any ranged hero, I would prioritize zoning if you're solo support. Because zoning will help your carry so much. You, you're gonna get your levels a bit later when your carry is higher level than the offlaner and carry can just stand alone on the lane. And also, you can start being, depending on what hero your carry is, if you have links on the safe lane, for example, or Queen of Pain, or or whatever range, or gyrocopter, who can just be be fighting the lane alone. You don't have that, uh, it's not that dangerous to go roaming, like you can just leave them alone earlier. But if you have hero who needs constant watching, like if you have anti-mage, and anti-mage is going against Dark Seal, Dark Seer, for example, you you can't really let that happen because your anti mage will get no farm and Dark Seer is gonna start free farming. So yeah, always uh, zoning before pulling, and always secure your Harry's farm as first priority. But like I said uh, in the guide, never stand on the lane. Always be like in the jungle next to the lane. Right. So do we have some more? I think we could take uh, two more questions if you have some something in mind so that this video doesn't get too long and boring. Two more questions for the zoning guide and then we'll start doing something else. <coughs> and more about the heroes while waiting for the questions. Uh, with Venge vengeful spirit, for example, when when I if I go only for zoning, if I if I'm not going for a kill, I think I would pick wave of terror, so my right clicks would do more, and mana cost is pretty little. So just walk to the walk to the enemy wave of terror and right clicking. That would, I believe, that would do more than magic missile, and also the mana cost. I can do almost three waves cost of one magic missile okay uh, let's see the heroes uh, I, I already talked quite a bit about the heroes so uh, about more we can go more into picking process uh, in another guide it's because this is about like laning stage and like the early game but uh, Kendrick is asking do you think buying a century ward first item is important in pub rank games I think it really depends on on the level of the play and how important it would be to how important it would be to uh, have your have your pull if you have two supports I think it's wise to buy a set of centuries because usually you will see where the where the uh, enemy observer ward is if you if you pay attention you usually can see it so i would i would say you should buy a sentry ward if you have two supports if you have only one you're not so dependent on the on the pool because you will get xp with your shared xp with your carry a bit so you can you can wait a bit until you get the 200 gold because you, you can't afford all the region and wards and career if you, if you are solo support. But it's always like it's it's pretty dangerous if the enemy have to uh, or imagine yourself in the situation where you have to play with a blank map since minute one. If if you are able to deward effectively, it's it's kind of scary. It's actually difficult to realize how, how much it does for example for offlaner that you see what's happening in the jung in the jungle. Even even a bit. And if you see a glimpse of hero every now and then it's it's quite a lot. And if it's completely black map you you have to play so carefully. So yeah, I, I think buying sentries is good. And as Dracos is saying in the chat, it's it's also like crucial to buy sentries and stuff or dusts 
against enemies heroes such as Rikimaru or Broodmother or Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter being, I think, the most popular of those at the moment. Even if it's only roaming Bounty Hunter, I would buy Sentry, Sentry for the mid laner. I'd, I'd place it. I place the Sentry Ward on mid lane as soon as possible, so they can't really roam him down. And one Sentry for killing, killing the bounty if he ends up, if he finds himself on our own safe lane. Okay, so I think we go for one more question. One more question uh, before we we go into something else. If there is something that you would be interested in, and laning face is the topic. All about laning face. Uh, we can still watch some heroes. Uh, let's see. Heroes that I would not solo support with. I think that was the topic before we went to answer answer questions. Yeah, melee heroes. These three guys here. I think that's that's about it. I think the other uh, normal support heroes would be would be okay ish. Can Ken Kenrick is asking if my team has a weak offlaner, would I go offlane instead? I guess he's meaning that if I would go dual lane with him. And it's it's kinda situational, but in, in some cases you just have to like like I said, you should stay in the fog so that the enemies don't know where you are. But I, I might sometimes just chill in the offlane like uh Let's take a okay bot match. I'm gonna start the game so I can show you the show you the places where I might just chill, like All waiting. Pick. Okay. Oh, I'm dire. Oh, it doesn't matter. I might be here, just standing in the in the trees Prepare or here. For battle. You have to wait until the enemies come. But if, if the offlaner gets levels, that's just that's all good. Or oh, then I might stand here in the fog so that just so that the enemy don't know. And always when you come here waiting and try to go there so that the enemies don't don't see. So they don't see you approaching. Always. You stand here. Stand here. Here or those are your places to be as a support if you're not pulling or zoning. Like kind of the best places. 